my liturgist back there, Clay Cole. We'll give it up for Clay Cole. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to turn the mic over to Janice McPhail, sitting beside Dan. And I know she wants to thank the Boyer family. Absolutely. We couldn't possibly do all this without the help of Brian and Kelly Boyer uh, from our uh, Dano Russo Boyer side of the family. And we thank you all very, very much. Leah and Lindsay are great helps. And we just appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you. We would do it without you. Yeah. And I am very excited to share with you. Uh, please welcome our McPhail Philadelphia family. They're sitting up on the rocks waving. Yeah. And we are so excited and happy to have them here with us as well. Um, we were talking about the tradition. Uh, uh, Roberto's here. And it's just, this has been going on for a really, really long time. There you are. Show them your new baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's just wonderful that this tradition continues. And we thank all of you for being a part of it and allowing us the honor to host it. Thank you. Well, yes. Thank you, Janice. Well, um... I also want to thank our musicians. I know it's always a little bit of a challenge to relocate to the out of doors, but Joan Flint is a star, and uh, I want to thank Georgia for being on flute, and Charlie Mays, of course. So thank you very much. Um, does everybody have access to a bulletin? I uh, apologize in advance for the few number of them and for the illegibility of some of them. Had a little toner crisis. Uh, Amazon sent the wrong one, so boo Amazon. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but we have a fresh toner coming. Thanks to Dale and Jane for uh, providing an address to send the toner to. Uh, where is Dale and Jane? Right here. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Well, if you can see one and read it, would you join with me in the call to worship? To you, O Lord, we lift up our eyes. You who are enthroned in the heavens. We are your children who look up to our mother. We are your servants who look up to our king. Show us your way of mercy and understanding so that we might choose forgiveness rather than contempt. To you, O Lord, we lift up our eyes to the heavens with gratitude. Let us worship our God, inspired by the beauty surrounding us. Amen. Let us pray. God, we just take a few moments of silence. silence we give thanks for this world you've created for us to inhabit and to have life and to have life abundantly and everyone sitting in this beautiful yard by this amazing river understands the depth of beauty and enjoyment that this place brings to us. So God, in your splendor, we give you thanks for life. And we are gathered here this morning to understand more fully who you are and what is this life that you've given us to live. The enjoyment of it and the work of it to create your family on this planet to help us to be kind people to each other and double kindness to this planet of ours. We pray it in the name of our Redeemer, our Jesus. Amen. 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 How's the mission going to work today? All right, Debbie. 
Do you want to wander a little bit with this thing? I don't know how much I'll want. <laughs> Give it to one of the kids, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. In July, uh, J June and July this year, we're collecting money for to support TIERS, which is Thousand Island help me, Emergency Rescue Service, I think. And I just want everyone who has ever had help from TIERS to raise your hand. A lot of people, right? And so this is our local mission for the year. So the first collection is for the, the mission, and then there will be a second collection, which is for the church. I need some help from some. Alden, can you help? Oh, yeah, yep, yep. Come on, Leah. Just go around. Mission, mission. Mission, mission. Play with her later. Sit down. As the mission collection is being taken up for tears um, and it is really the heart of our church community to give of ourselves for our neighbors and um, that's especially what this mission offering is about um, but now we have a little time for announcements just a short little brief time for announcements yes <laughs> well if I could stand up yeah, here right there here we go and, um, all right um, on Wednesday this Wednesday uh, we are at okay, 4 o'clock, oh, Wednesday at 4 o'clock, um, we are having Blessing of the Animals. Oh. This is our uh, chief animal, animal lover, yeah. chief animal, and, um, <coughs> and also Lily will be the host uh, of, with our group. Anyway, we're, we're meeting at the squash court, and it's just a, yes, last year we had our first, our first event. It was so much fun. A storm came up, so there were a lot of people who didn't come, and so we're hoping for good weather this year. But um, anyway, hamburgers will be provided, and I think lemonade, and um, please bring a dish to pass. If you have an animal that's extra special, or a photo of an animal that you'd like to have the blessing for, or no animals at all, just homo sapiens, that would be great. Or you can bring your animal. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, bring your animal, yeah, for sure. So anyway, we're very happy to have this event and hope you'll all take advantage of it. <laughs> Sally, 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 okay, we are good. I'm selling rose bushes. Uh, we have a Memorial Rose Sunday on October, no, no, August. Oh, August, I always want to say October, uh, August uh, 4th. Uh, we have envelopes for you. Uh, what you do is uh, uh, dedicate a, a rose plant to someone in, in memory of, and you fill out the form. Uh, they, they run $20. Um, and get them back to us because a week from tomorrow I have to put in the order. And so far I've only gotten one, so I got a lot of work to do between now and then. So uh, when I finish here, if someone doesn't have an envelope, would you please raise your hand so I can bring them to you? Thank you, Sally. All right, get those hands up high if you don't have an envelope for this Memorial Roses, which is really just to honor someone in your life who's passed away that you'd like to remember. <laughs> And this will happen on our annual memorial service where we honor those in our grandstone family who passed away in the last year. Other announcements? That's it. If I'm not mistaken, this is the last turkey dinner announcement I will make. Hey! <laughs> so, uh, we are having turkey dinner on Saturday at 5 p.m. Before that, we have... a. Uh, Kind of a men's coffee, but everybody's welcome at 9 o'clock at the carriage house on Friday. We have 55 pounds of potatoes to peel, but it goes in about 20 minutes or so with all of if we have a lot of hands. So please come there, and then the, we'll finish the prep there. Come back on Saturday morning, 10-ish. We'll finish everything up, and then the turkey dinner will start at 5. I'm still taking donations, gratefully, if you would pass them on. Um, also, uh, if, 
in your pa coming uh, on Saturday morning, if you happen to pass some flowers that would look good in our little vases, and we'd be grateful if you'd grab a few, because we just need to gather some, uh, but we have the team of Phyllis and Phyllis to put them together, but we need to have them gathered. So please just you know, grab some of those wildflowers or something out of your garden to help us out. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and thanks to <clears throat> Betsy and Kay Cole for uh, making this beautiful island tradition continue and happen. So thank you for that. Eric and Nancy Lewis. Eric and Nancy Lewis, yes. All right, and and the greater Grindstone community. There's another. Other? <clears throat> Charlie, you're going to have to scream it, man. Yeah, okay. So we had another outlaw, uh, uh, fallout of the electricity and uh, we have had, ever since we built our house, uh, solar. And if anybody wants to look at that system, uh, we have uh, electricity all the time. We never know when the light, when the light goes off or not. And if, if you'd like to take a look at it and come over, uh, just let me know and you're welcome to, I'll, I'll show you what we have. And uh, maybe you'd be interested uh, for uh, something uh, on, a, on a problem when you when the light goes out, or maybe getting off the grid entirely. Mm. So I'll show you how to do that uh, if you want. Just let me know. All right. So if you didn't hear that, you, I know you know the power now. <laughs> Charlie's suggesting his power to go out because he's on the solar uh, energy. So he's suggesting if you want to. You get into the solar panel uh, community. Talk to this guy on the roof. There. Other announcements, introductions. I know. I, I'll just do it for Maddie, because she's a long way from the mic. Um, of course, uh, Maya and Adrian just wave. Uh, our good friends from Toronto uh, haven't been in a little while. Welcome back. But new timers. Mikey and Olivia, and their their furry one, Ralph. Yeah, so welcome, yeah, welcome. you guys. <laughs> oh, and Scott's mom, Beth, is here. Yes, hey. so Beth White, welcome. Anything else we need to cover? Well, um, let's continue our worship in this amazing setting. So we're going to hear from our musician. This is the classic... Always at Aunt Jane's Bay Hen. Shall we gather at the river? That's a question to which we say, yes. yes. Please. I suggest just let's just stay seated uh, and just belt it out. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. I love that. Well, our prayer this morning, our unison prayer, um, is written by a theologian named Howard Thurman. And every time this floats into our bulletin, I always think of Bev Davison. And really, I know we all share the sadness of her loss. Um, but I hope you'll join with me in the spirit of Bev Davison and Howard Thurman as we pray this prayer together. Let's pray. Yeah, Francesca, you got it. Lord, give me the listening ear. I seek this day the disciplined mind, the disciplined heart, the disciplined life that makes my ear the focus of attention through which I may become mindful of expressions of life foreign to my own. Give me this day the eye that is willing to see my own faults for what they are, the eye that is willing to see the likable qualities in those I may not like, the mistake in what I thought was correct, the strength in what I labeled a weakness. Give me the listening ear, the eye that is willing to see. say many times, when we confess ourselves, as Howard Thurman has helped us do, uh, it's not out of a spirit of defeat. It's out of a spirit, uh, as we'll explore this theme of weakness, and where is the power in weakness? And as we confess our shortcomings and our inability to fully embrace the commandment to love, which is the simple one-line job description that God has given us, um, it isn't out of a sense of defeat. It's out of a sense of our need for help in that effort to love one another. So we, as we confess ourselves, we rejoice that there is a power who completes us and gives us the tools required to create this world of love rather than a world that is uh, self-destructive. So sing with me if you know this uh, little Bob Dylan uh, refrain. I see my light come shining from the west down to the east. Any day now, any day. For all of us, we see our light come shining from the west down to the east. Any day now, any day now, we shall be released. Amen. So the Boyer family is going to help us with our scripture this morning. Come on down. Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 27b through chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. I, Ezekiel, saw in the sky something that looked like fire, and there was a splendor all around, like the bow in a cloud on a rainy day. Such was the appearance of the splendor all around. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. 
the descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, they, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Amen. <clears throat> Lily, you know you're right in the way, right? <laughs> uh, you might need that one because. All right, they're screaming out. This reading is from 2 Corinthians, verses 12, 5b through 10. On my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. <clears throat> So we're going to try to unpack uh, those scripture lessons, um, and we're going to start um, with my friend Leah. Leah, are you are you able to join me up here? And I don't know, Alden, are you up for this? Or? <laughs> Thank you. You're awesome too. Uh, well, let's sit on this little rock over here. We'll just do a quick little sunbathing, and you can get back to your seat. Um, anybody else is welcome, of course. But this is an awesome collection of people right here. Um, so I don't know if you, like, that Ezekiel reading where Ezekiel's looking up at the sky and it's, they keep talking about the splendor. And I think we can kind of understand a little bit about the splendor on a day like today. Um, but then he's like, okay, I need you to, I need you to talk to my community my community is not understanding what I am all about. And sometimes that sounds like a teacher or a parent who's like, um, you didn't do that right, and now you need to be corrected. We've talked about this before, right? But, but it's hard to put that into the same category of splendor and beauty when we need to kind of change direction. So I want us to think about power, and I want you to do this for me. Because power <clears throat> is needed to change things, right? Like, if you don't have some 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 kind of strength to change, it's not going to change, right? Don't, don't you think that's true? Um, so I want you to roll up your sleeve. Can you do that? I wish Hallie was here. My daughter Hallie loves to do this. And, and make make your make your muscle. You know how to do that? Have you done that before? So what Hallie does is she slaps it a little bit to kind of pump it up. <laughs> um, and with that, we we might do that in a show of strength. I don't know if you ever arm wrestled anybody. I mean, you know, it's just to show that you're stronger, got more muscle than somebody else. But that's not the kind of strength that God is talking about. I don't know if you if you heard what the Apostle Paul, he's got a lot of cool things to say, but sometimes it's very theoretical and kind of hard to understand. But he talked about weakness. But that the what he meant by weakness is not like, oh, you have less of this than I do. No. It's about being a part of a group and not um, feeling like I can do this all on my own strength, but recognizing your need for other people. And I'll give you a little example. 
yesterday, um, we were down at the squash court, maybe preparing for the blessing of the animals, making sure the grill works, which it does, yay. Um, and Maddie was driving the, the car and by herself, and guess what happened to her? It's kind of muddy. I know some of you have traveled through muddy paths just to get here. She got stuck in her car. The mud. <laughs> yeah, that never happened to you. And it's yeah. and it's a bad feeling when you feel like, here I am, all alone. I don't have what I need to move forward. And that's a weakness. But it's a good weakness. Because then you know that, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to call my friends, my community, because I need my community to help push this big old vehicle out of mud. And that's the power of weakness. Depending on your friends and your community and your family to create the power of love, to move us through from a place where we thought we were stuck to a place of freedom and joy. Does that sound all right? All right, we should probably get out of sight. So let's do a quick little prayer. Can we do that? Can you repeat after me? Okay. Dear God, maybe everybody can do it so they don't feel so weird about it. All right. Dear God, Dear God, Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For being our God. For being our God. And that your splendor. And that your splendor. Is the beauty of love. Is the beauty of love. And our weakness. And our weakness. Is the power of love. Is the power of love. And what do we say at the end of the prayer? Amen. 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 Thank you guys for being here. Well, I, I do think when Ezekiel um, pays attention to the skies and sees that splendor of a fire and a rainbow and something amazing up there, and then that something speaks to him and says, mortal, uh, yeah, just remember, you're in a situation different from this up here, that your lifespan is limited. So remember who you are. And I, I need you. You know, so that's kind of interesting. This source of what we call power needs Ezekiel. So now, we often think of God as self-sufficient, the creator of everything, didn't need anybody to create the world and the river and the islands and the sun and the moon, and just spoke it. So we tend to think of God as this island person who doesn't need anybody or anything. And yet the primary thing that we have come to understand about God is that God is Love, am I right? I mean, how else would you talk about who God is? Like, the essence of love. And is it possible to have love that doesn't include others? Uh, I don't know how that would work. So it's interesting to me to think about the splendor of God saying to Ezekiel, I need you to be with me in this mission to transform this old world that has rebelled against the principle of love and to bring that world in line with the commandments and the imperatives of love. Um, <clears throat> and so even though that sounds like uh, a lot of work, yes it is, and that we have a long way to go, yes we do, but the result, imagine, the result that would um, come to pass if we were willing to listen for the word of the Lord in the way of love and follow 
how our world would be different. And I know if you're like me, you see a little bit of that in the grindstone world. Sure, we have a little bit of tiffs now and then. People misunderstand and have some feuds, yes. Um, but we're not at war with each other, you know, are we? <laughs> I mean, we kind of understand that interdependence that we're all a part of if your car gets stuck or your boat runs out of gas or um, something happens when your electricity goes out. <laughs> Um, we understand that our weakness, when we can't do what we thought we could do to be self-sufficient, our weakness is covered <coughs> in this power of love, of an interconnected community. And that is what God wants for our whole world. And if you look at our whole world, it's not hard to see that there is a lot <laughs> of division and a lot of mistrust and a lot of saying like well you're the bad people and we're the good people and we just as soon distance ourselves from the bad people without recognizing that the power that we need is everybody to be on board with the weakness that is required for love um, so how we might listen for the word of the Lord on a beautiful day like this to remember that all of this beauty is for the purpose of creating a family of God. And our job is to be a part of that purpose, which is work, in which we fail, consistently, and yet that weakness is made perfect by recognizing that it's not all up to Jeff McCarn or a Lily or any individual, but it requires all of us to work in this weakness together to create power. So when the Apostle Paul says, my weakness is made perfect, has made power perfect, or how those words fit together. Um, because we don't like that word weak. I mean, it's just a bad word. Right? Like, or <coughs> adversity, affliction, things that we're not ready for. And the Apostle Paul is saying, look, I have had this thorn in my flesh. He doesn't say what it was, but we can fill in the blanks about the thorns in our flesh things that have disappointed us and made us feel like we're not really fulfilling what I set out to do. Paul is saying that those thorns are what help us to recognize that it's not about my individual vision. It's about our collective understanding of needing each other. So the next time you run into something unpleasant. Uh, hopefully it'll be further away than this afternoon, uh, but it could happen this afternoon. Bear in mind the Apostle Paul saying that's a positive sign that your weakness is calling out to be made perfect in collective power of friends and family and community. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. God, the splendor is all around us. And we have no mistaking that you are the source of beauty. And the gifts, the abundant gifts of life are overwhelming to us because we value it so highly. So help us to understand that this splendor at its heart is about joining together with all of our brothers and sisters and recognizing our common need for each other to create the kind of power of love that you require. We pray it sincerely 
in the name of our Redeemer, our Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, precious Lord, I, I, one of my favorite songs, in part because it is a song um, that talks about running into affliction and growing tired and feeling weak and feeling worn and that there's someone to take our hands in that hour of need. Uh, it's also a special song to me because it is the last thing that Martin Luther King Jr. said from the upper balcony of the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee to uh, the driver who was going to the dinner they were all going to and said, make sure that they play Precious Lord at dinner. So let's sing together. We can just remain seated for this. that I'd like to share. I had a lovely visit with Liz uh, Raisbeck this week, oh, good. and she's feeling stronger every day. Um, she misses us all and wishes she could be here, but she knows it's best to yeah. remain at home. <coughs> but yeah. she's doing well. Yeah, Liz Raisbeck, I'm sure we all, most of us know Liz, if you don't. Um, her husband Zell passed away this spring, and that's super difficult and then she broke her hip the and so it's been a source of sadness for the loss of Zell and for Liz's accident but we're hoping that she can still come maybe maybe not but anyway thank you for remembering Liz and reaching out to her uh, uh, he's anxious for the blessing of the animals I can tell yeah, yes I love to um I just heard that Ethan Brown passed away, uh, who was Liz Brown's son. Make sure everybody uh, yeah. Ethan Brown passed away, and Liz uh, Brown's son, who was also deceased. So our hearts go out to the Brown family um, for this unexpected loss. Um, I'd also like to have a joy that the Lathams are here. Yeah. 
Stub Lasham, you know, he's having some health problems and was in the hospital for a day or two, but he's back on the island. I saw him riding down the road in his uh, four-wheeler yesterday. Seems to be in getting better each day, but has, still has some issues that he has to uh, see some uh, different doctors for, and unfortunately they're not located close by. Mm -hmm. But uh, he seems like his old self again. Awesome. And I also want to thank uh, my uh, daughter Megan and her family, her and her husband, Marisha for coming and bringing their wonderful children for the week with us, and uh, it's wonderful to have them. Awesome. And of course, my wonderful wife Janice for putting up with me. Ah, yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Lord, 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 in your mercy. Yeah. yeah. Here are yeah. prayers. <laughs> other, other thoughts for prayer? Yes, Beth. mother of Scott Mason, Scott just waved, uh, <laughs> deploying on Tuesday for the Arizona border to help our country get good things out down there. So Godspeed, Scott. And Beth, it's wonderful to have you with us in worship. Yeah. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 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 God, let, hear, hear our prayer. We live this life often with the thought that we're on our own and that we have to accomplish what is before us on our own. So give us the blessing of the knowledge of your presence among us and help us to remember that our primary task, the top of our to-do list, is to create the beloved community everywhere we go. Right on, Francesca. So be with us. <clears throat> we know that you understand our struggles and where we are hurting and where we're joyful. So make us whole people committed to your way. We pray it in the strong name of the one who taught us how to pray, who said, Our Father, who art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid
start the process of standing up <laughs> and um, and if you um, I'll sing it and like join in when you can we are tossed and driven on the restless sea of time somber skies and howling tempests all succeed bright sunshine in the When the mists have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning 
And take us unawares, and our hearts are made to bleed for a thousand words or deeds, and we wonder why the test when we try to do our best, and we'll understand it better by and by, by and by, by. We have to admit that we don't fully understand it now because weakness sounds bad, power sounds good, but what kind of power? The power of love to make our weakness whole. That's it. So just think about that. Be involved in that. Amen. Amen. Coffee time. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Thank you, Jeff.